Greetings, members, one and all of the Salvation Nation, with an unboxing of some gold. Actually, the second gold of the year, purchase of the year. And take a look at what's inside of this. This comes to us from Atmex, and it was kind of a, uh, a unique buy. Something that I'd kind of discovered and I thought was quite interesting. Uh, you know what? Might as well go ahead and pick one up. As is always the case, a package inside of a package. And uh, this is quite a unique offering indeed. I think you will find that is the case. Um, one of those pieces that you'd like to do a little research on. And I have, but I won't really report on that until the next unboxing to be coming somewhat soon too. But this video is going to be about not only the piece that we're looking at here. We're going to look at it, examine it closely. It is the Mega Leaf here that you can see. Very interesting indeed. Yes, look at that. This is not just a one ounce coin, gold coin. This is a 1.5 ounce gold coin. Look at that. Wow. Amazing indeed. From the Royal Canadian Mint. 1.5 ounces of gold. Look at that beautifully designed with a mega leaf you may recognize this look as this was on some silver pieces as well and also a 10 ounce version of this was created but this is the first time it was done in gold in one and a half ounce size of a bullion coin and uh, there will be more on this uh but I want to talk a little bit about this purchase. Um, I made this uh, sort of on a whim uh, and I knew I had my eye on it, a little bit of a premium on it, but not terribly bad considering what these have, uh, have or at least been trying to sell for on the secondary market, mostly eBay. And um, I'm also just trying to buy <clears throat> with the lowest price possible if I can. Nonetheless, that's not always the case if you want to get a, a unique coin such as this. But I made a purchase on Panic. Essentially, FOMO took over. And uh, FOMO is one of those things that you're, uh, it can serve two, uh, two purposes. Fear of missing out is something that collectors often feel, probably more so than bullion buyers. But uh, this is one of those cases where this is a coin that is affected by the bullion price obviously because it's gold but there's a collector value as well and a limited number of these being offered because this is a hard to come by coin i won't necessarily say rare uh because i don't know the mintage on it I'm not being able to find that out but i know this is one that i had kind of had my eye on for a while and uh, i bought this during a live stream actually Many of you, well, some of you were there, uh, and uh, I made this purchase as the price was starting to go up, and right at the very beginning, and of course, I went ahead and bought, and I probably shouldn't have bought because the price dropped like $30 the next day, and in fact, it started to drop during the course of the live stream, and some of my live streamers are saying, hey, you bought out of fear, out of FOMO, and look what it got you. Yes, indeed. Well, part of that reason is because this is the particular coin that I wanted to get. And so, therefore, fear uh, of missing out on this particular coin was the motivating, was the overall motivating factor. But I didn't let my live streamers know about that uh, during the course of that live stream. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, this does have somewhat of a collector value to it, I would say. Although, I don't know exactly how that would translate if I was to try to sell this again. My guess is I wouldn't get the collector value out of it. But nonetheless, there it is. 1.5 ounces. <clears throat> and this also makes up for my first gold purchase of the year. Which uh, is a 1 ounce coin that uh, has a very large diameter. It's got the diameter of a silver coin. So it's much thinner. 
So I made up for this one because it has the diameter of a one ounce gold uh, Canadian maple leaf, which is 30 millimeters, but it is uh, 1.5 ounces. So that means that it is, it is much thicker. And you know me, for those who are familiar with this channel, you know, one of my mottos is that I am down with a thickness. And that is something that is a purveying, uh, sort of as a pervasive theme on this on this channel. Uh, so therefore, pleased to have this in the in the collection now. I'm gonna actually put it on a stand here. So I don't have to hold it because it's heavy. Yes, indeed. There it is. So uh, <clears throat> this is one of those coins that uh, you know, if you're a collector like I am, as well as a a, a stacker. Um, you know, if there's a coin you want, and there's a very limited amount out there uh, that a bullion company may have, you're, the fear of missing out is a something that's a real concern. It's a real factor and scenario, and uh, <clears throat> it serves two purposes. But I, I always tell folks not to be driven by fear when you make purchases. And uh, obviously, even in my case, you know, uh, you know, it's something that certainly I should take my own advice. Uh, if I weren't a collector, I, I would. I would just wait. But you never really know. Uh, sometimes when you make a purchase, it's just the name of the game. The prices are going to go up or the prices are going to go down. So that's why you can't necessarily let it drive you. Um, and you must be prepared for the, uh, for the consequences of your purchase. Now, as I record this video... Um, and as the time this coin arri has uh, had arrived, it was actually lost in the mail for a little bit. Not really lost, it just wasn't uh, tracked, and the post office mishandled mishandled the situation, unfortunately. But nonetheless, um, uh, during the course of that time, it turned out it was actually a smart purchase because gold is actually up as of the recording of this video uh, further than it had gone up before when I made that purchase. But it's really about when you buy. So you, when you make a purchase, um, it's the price that you pay for it at that time. Um, of course, now if I was to sell this coin um, uh, back to Atmex, obviously aside from the premiums, um, I would probably do fairly okay on it. But nonetheless, uh, that's just it, folks. Fear is something that is a strong motivator in all aspects. But you can't let it drive you so much to the point of, of uh, getting... Um, um, losing out in, with your finances. In other words, you don't want to go into debt, uh, unnecessary debt to try to get ahead of spot price or try to get the one coin that you have had a hard time, a hard time finding no matter what metal it's made of. If you're a collector out there, fear of missing out is a real uh, possibility. It's, it's a real factor. It's, 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 a, it's a, something that uh, I know that uh, collector friends of mine have say there's only one of these notes or coins that are out there they've never seen ever in their life and they picked the one opportunity to pick it up and they took advantage of it and realizing okay there it is I've got it now um, and what do I do with it well it's one of those things where who else is going to want to buy this um, if you need to sell it and this is kind of the example with this coin uh, you don't see them around uh, very often. In fact, I never really had heard about this coin, um, maybe briefly some time ago. I'll talk about it in a future video. But, you know, it, sometimes some coins, they're released, and then in time, they lose their appeal, or people just forget about them, because there's so many different modern issues of coins out there that, um, you know, they, they get lost. They get, uh, and so, therefore, if they get forgotten about, there's not much of a demand for them. Very little demand, uh, very little knowledge about them. So reselling it <clears throat> is going to be an issue. So that's why you have to consider spot price, especially with a gold coin like this. Now I know that I'm somewhat protected uh, because I, I paid a premium over spot, but not that much over spot that um, it's not going to be, I'm not going to be underwater so much with this coin. Uh, so that's why I felt comfortable buying it. Although I will say that if you look in the secondary market with what people are trying to sell these for, um, and they're not selling, people are not biting 
at those very high prices for this coin. Um, so therefore, it's a matter of sourcing, it's a matter of doing your research um, to be able to get the best deal possible. And so therefore, I paid um, you know, an average to high premium for this coin from Atmex, um, but not so high that I'm underwater with it completely. In other words, the spot price goes up uh, marginally more, especially to where it was, um, you know, in in 2020, leading up to uh, 2002 to about $2,000 an ounce, or about $1,900 an ounce, I would be doing very well with this coin. It's all a matter of perspective, and really, for me, it's really more about the the uh, wanting the coin as a collector, and uh, you know, essentially. When you think about it, when I lost in a premium from the course, from the time that I made the purchase to the next day, when the spot price dropped $30 an ounce, um, you know, it wasn't that much, that big of a deal when you think about it. Um, and now it's all recaptured. So there you have it, a little lesson about FOMO and how you buy in a, in a gold coin to boot here. So there you have it. Let me know what your thoughts are. Did you know these existed? The 1.5 ounce Super Maple Leaf. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch this video and to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.